That's good. All right. Hi, Kathleen. Gonna have some music today, I think. Cause the music's a little loud in here. But that's pretty common, I guess. That's what happens when you go to bars. Hmm. This is really good. It's almost gone. Ciao, Laura. Hello, hello. Morning to Ohio. Definitely not morning here. Hi, June. Hmm. All right, so hello, Philippines, Delaware. Hi, DJ. Good to see everyone. Mary Beck, Claudia, California. Kathleen, I'm drinking Aperol Spritz. And a very nice glass. Okay. No, no, grazie. Okay. I always turn away the food. They think I'm nuts. Hi, Annie. So I've mentioned this before, but when you have Apera TV in Rome, um, so in this case, I ordered an Aperol spritz. Uh, usually pay like, depending on where you are, five euro to here at seven, some places maybe 10, or even 20 if it's a really fancy place. I'm assuming you guys can hear me over the music. Um, but it always includes food, so little snacks. So today uh, he was just offering me the snacks and I always turn it down because um, I'm talking to you and I don't wanna eat and talk at the same time, but I can drink and talk. This is a really good Aperol Spritz. So Aperol Spritz, very traditional Aperol TV drink. It has Aperol in it, Prosecco, a little splash of soda water, and a slice of an orange. And it's almost gone. Oh good, sound is perfect. I got a 100 from my wife. That's our little, our little uh, code. If the sound is good, she gives me a 100. So. But now this song's even louder. So today I am at a tea house. It's a tea house and a wine bar. Um, it's right off Borgo Pio. And it's a nice little place. I could go for some different music though. So, um, virus updates. Father John, you love these? Good. Father, right? Um, what was I saying? Oh, virus updates. So pretty much the same from the last few weeks. Rome is still doing okay, uh, better than some other regions. The other regions that were red, there were some of those are turning orange or yellow, which means they're getting better. Uh, we have more restrictions, I think, being announced today or tomorrow. I, I haven't really been keeping up. Um, I'm kind of fine with where we are right now in Rome. Um, I don't like that the restaurants close at six. I don't like the masks outside, um, but we're able to go all over the city. Uh, we have a curfew 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, so as long as they don't change that, uh, like add to it, I'll be okay. Um, I think Christmas, we have an earlier curfew and New Year's Day, our curfew lasts until 7 a.m. for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why 5 a.m. wasn't good enough. Hi, Amanda. So, uh, Aperol Spritz today, for those just joining on. And I'm gonna have to get another one already. Like, I just started and it's almost gone. It's because it's so good and it's in this really nice, heavy, it's like leaded glass or something. Hmm. Yep, it's officially gone. So, I'll need another one. But I'm close to home, so that's good. Uh, it's snowing in Rochester. Not snowing here. Now, I mentioned, uh, what time is midnight mass on Christmas Eve? Uh, some churches are doing it at eight o'clock. So the papal mass is usually 
I think at eight o'clock. It's closed to the public this year. Um, but we will not have traditional midnight mass this year because our curfew is at 10 p.m. And so it would make that impossible. So that's really unfortunate. Yeah, there's lots of ice in here, Sandra. Look at all that ice. Um, I already forgot what I was saying. Christmas mass, curfews, after all. I'm gonna need another one of these. Notro? That was easy. No, no regrets. Again, I turned down the food. He really wants me to take the food, but I don't eat the food, so just the drink. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's going to be like that in a lot of places. No midnight mass because a lot of places have the curfew, at least in Europe. And in America, I think there's it's different everywhere, but some of you have restrictions on when you can have certain gatherings. So, I know my parish back in the States, their Christmas Mass like starts ridiculously early. It starts like 2 o'clock or something. I don't know. Hopefully next year things will improve. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple things today. So somebody already asked about the Nativity. I've talked about the Nativity quite a bit, uh, especially on Saturday. I did a live at the Nativity. I had my coffee break at the Nativity. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with it, the Vatican Nativity was started by John Paul II uh, back in the 80s. And he would always use the same figures. They would just build a different set every year. And if you've already heard me say this, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it again, but I'll do, give the abbreviated version. Um, and then, they started doing some research into the Vatican finances. You may have heard of Vati Leaks, Vatican Leaks. This was back in like 2011, I think. Um, and they saw that they were spending sometimes 200 to $700,000 a year just to build the set for the nativity that went into the piazza. And so they realized there was some corruption going on because it could have been done for a lot less. And so the idea was put out there to maybe uh if, yeah if you missed that live on saturday it's it's on uh it's on instagram so you can just go to my feed or igtv and you can watch it um but the idea was that rather than use the same figures every year and the vatican pay to build a new set for the figures to stand in that they would um allow someone to donate it each year and they just did different regions very good for that too. Thank you. They did, uh, the idea was to have different regions donate the full nativity. And so they took the figures and now they display the figures at another church um, during Advent. And so they've only been doing the donated nativity since 2012. And most years it's beautiful. They, they build these great sets they have traditional figures and the Italian nativity we talk about this in the latest podcast um, which you can find on iTunes or at the Catholic traveler.com but the Italian nativity they always wanted to incorporate uh, local scenes and local people and so if you look at the picture I posted yesterday of the Monsignor Marini nativity which is at his apartment building um, there's a guy making pizza so very Italian there's a woman like hanging laundry out on the lines. You know, if you think of like Naples, uh, you always see like the laundry lines outside with people drying the laundry. And so anytime a region would donate the nativity, they would incorporate things that were local to them, whether it be like the buildings, so they'd build buildings in the style of their region. Or um, last year there was a, there were a couple people in it that were, I guess, kind of local, I don't want to say celebrities, but like local people that people knew. Like there was a guy with a briefcase. There was a woman making um, some type of pasta or potato dish or something. I don't remember what it was. Uh, but that was like a real person that people from that region knew. And so it's pretty common for the nativities to reflect the region they come from. 
And so this year, the region that was selected was Abruzzo, which is a beautiful region. It's on the East Coast, so opposite of Rome. Um, if you've ever been with me to the restaurant Abruzzi, uh, they're named after that region. And the green Sambuca that we have there comes from that region. So the green Sambuca, like you can't find it anywhere in Rome, you can't, except the restaurant, you can't find it in grocery stores or anything like that. Um, but if you go to Abruzzo, they have it everywhere. All the bars have all these different green Sambucas, not just the one that Abruzzi has, but like 20, 30 varieties. Go to the grocery store, there's green Sambuca on the shelves. Um, so anyway, when Abruzzo did their nativity, they wanted to include figures that were made of ceramics because the Abruzzo region is known for their ceramics. And so there's this school there that makes ceramics and they have this 54 piece nativity that were, it was made by the students and the teachers from that school. And so Abruzzo selected pieces from that to send to the Vatican. And like, I don't hate it. I don't hate like the pieces, like the Holy Family. It's not like, I don't think it belongs in front of St. Peter's Basilica. Hi mom, my mom's here now. Um, but I don't like, the, the pieces are fine. Uh, I, but they're out of place at St. Peter's for sure. But out of the 54 pieces, they selected the Holy Family and baby Jesus and the Blessed Mother, they both look ridiculous they look like uh i don't know if you know little people their toys they kind of look like that with like the little curly blonde hair and they're short and stubby um all the figures are like cylindrical with just heads on them um maybe that was how they did the ceramics there simple um so it's kind of like almost cute funny not offensive like some people are saying but it feels so out of place at St. Peter's. And then Three Wise Men, they're okay. Uh, kind of the same style. The animals, there's like a big goose. It's a cute little goose. There's a ridiculous looking turkey, um, a camel. I think there's a donkey or something. They're all fine. Um, and then they included an astronaut. So the set was built in the 60s and 70s. So that was around the time of when we went to the moon. So it was probably like big in the news at the time was the astronaut man on the moon. So I don't know why they picked that out of the 54 pieces to include, but they did. And it's weird, but it's, it's something you would see in a lot of Italian nativities. Again, like something that's current events, well, back in the 60s, 70s, or something that's local to the region so we have the ceramic because it's local to the region i guess the astronaut because that's when they built it but then there's this hideous figure behind the astronaut and that's the one that's like i think is awful it's some say maybe it's a roman soldier nobody knows what it is like nobody from the abruzzo region that sponsored it they they haven't commented on it at all nobody from the vatican's commented on it but it's this guy wearing this metal mask has horns and it just looks evil it doesn't look like happy joyful it, do, it doesn't have anything Christmassy at all and you usually don't see evil people in nativities um, again in our podcast we talk about this you'll often find like a drunk guy so a lot of the really elaborate uh, nativities around Rome you'll see a, like the town drunk and you'll see people drinking wine or a guy passed out or something so you have stuff like that um, they even go so far as like sometimes you'll see like uh, like a bathroom or something in the nativity so the whole idea is that it's Jesus was born into like a real world not some fancy Place, you know, born in a stable with centers all around and everything. Um, so that's why you'll find stuff like that. But the you don't usually see like an evil guy. Some say maybe it's King Herod. Um, but again, nobody has said who this guy is. He just looks like, especially with the horns, it kind of looks like a demon or something. And he's kind of creeping behind the astronaut. So um, Christine and I went over there again today 
and like from afar you see the holy family see the three wise men some of the animals the astronaut stands out but then the creepy like stalker murderous demon guy is kind of behind the astronaut so again it doesn't bring much joy man this guy makes really good aperol spritz um Joni says, is it a Krampus? It is not a Krampus. Krampuses are scary too. Um, but no, this guy definitely isn't a Krampus. Because Krampus doesn't wear a helmet. Krampus just has a scary face. If you don't know what Krampus is, Krampus is, it's in like Germany and Austria. It's, uh, I don't really know the whole story. I should because I talked about it last week and because I go to the Christmas markets every year. But the Krampus is like, this, he's usually like chained to Santa being pulled around he terrorizes kids and kind of scares them into being good um, maybe he's guarding Jesus I don't know I, I posted this that it kind of looks like you know when baby Jesus is born you're going to have this really scary because in Italian nativities they don't put Jesus out until Christmas so you just have like the empty crash or the empty crib or whatever um, also Though, in this one, they have the Jesus there, the baby Jesus there, but he's covered up. Originally, before they unveiled it, like the days before when they gave like sneak peeks, the baby Jesus just had like a blindfold on, which really looked creepy. It looked like somebody was about to kidnap baby Jesus. And then you got the scary guy standing beside him. But now they have Jesus like completely covered up with like a big bag over his whole body, um, which I guess is better. But really, why do they even need to put it out yet? They can just kind of put him in the warehouse behind the nativity the other thing i said this was just going to take a minute to talk about the nativity now it's been like 20 minutes the other thing that i really don't like about it though like i would be fine i wouldn't love it but i would be okay if they had the, the holy family some of the weird looking animals and the wise men and maybe even the astronaut just to say like this was made during this time not the evil guy though but if they built an actual scene they didn't do that this year they usually they build like villages like like i said buildings from that region where it's from so the architecture looks like that region so like the region of abruzzo or something um this year all they built was this red carpet ramp it's like going up and so the wise men are kind of walking up it and then you've got the the scary demon guy and the astronaut and then you have the holy family and the camel or something on the way and then the background is just clear glass with some kind of etching in it and then a neon white light that some people say might be the mountains of Arutsu that would make sense because it's a mountainous region but it's just like one line very like modern simple um, kind of looks like a lightning bolt and then there's a glass roof to protect it from rain or something and then on the ground like where we're standing they have these white lights shooting out so it just looks weird it's too modern for where it is so that's what i wanted to say about the nativity i'm done with the nativity unless you have questions if you have questions about the nativity I'll answer them. But the astronaut's kind of grown on me just because it's so ridiculous. Um, what's the question? Purposely discouraging visitors. Maybe. You know, I don't, people keep asking me, does, does anyone love it? And, or does anyone like it? I've had people tell me that they don't hate it. I've had people tell me that it's interesting. I've had people say that it's okay or they think that it's kind of cute because it was made by kids and teachers. But I haven't heard anyone say I love it. And most years people love the nativity. Like there's a lot of people that love it or they go look at it at night. This one, uh, the other night when we went, um, we heard this lady beside us, Italian lady, and she was like, Oh, is that an astronaut? Like, they just think it's weird for the most part. And I'm okay with 
interesting nativities. I mentioned this on Saturday too, that one of my favorites is um, in Assisi, they have like all these different regions. They have all their nativities, like different countries and stuff. And there's one that I saw for sale and it's the Holy Family in Mexico. But baby Jesus, instead of being in like a crib, he's in a jalapeno. <laughs> and I've, I've always regretted buying that one. It's like a little, little glass set. But it doesn't belong at the Vatican, right? You don't, this is the year that we needed beauty. And instead we've got this weird space set. Um, uh, but yeah, some people have said that maybe because there's no tourism this year, so they just kind of use this one. I don't think that's the case. They plan these things way in advance. So unless they planned the COVID pandemic well in advance. Uh, how would it have been approved? Uh, well, yeah, the church does want to attract beauty. Um, but some the people that made it, maybe they think it's beautiful. And the region... Now, I have a friend from the Abruzzo region who says that the people of Abruzzo are horrified that that was selected. But at the same time, there's people in Abruzzo that are excited that you know their ceramic school was selected to be the nativity. And again, if they made a better scene, they didn't include the little demon guy, it wouldn't be great. Like out of the, out of the eight years that they've done this, it probably would have been like number eight on the list of best, maybe seven, because the naked guy from 2017 was a little weird. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm drinking an Aperol spritz. This is my second, if you missed that. The first one I finished in seven minutes because it was so good. Um, I'm at a little tea bar slash wine bar um, on Via Plauto, just off Borgo Pio. It's a good place. Um, really nice glass. Um, let me show you around real quick. So this is outside. It's a cute little bar. The music is a little loud. You can see all the teas and the wines behind the bar. So... Um, uh, Joni says, at least the naked guy had an explanation. Yeah, so if you heard me mention the naked guy just now. So in 2017, the theme was the corporal works of mercy. And so there's, I wrote a whole blog post on those figures. But the, so they had like clothed the naked. But for the naked guy, it was this really buff, like built, six pack, you know, perfect body, naked guy. Um, so it seemed a little weird, uh, it's like, it seemed weird in front of the Vatican for sure. And then, um, the bury the dead guy was just creepy because that was on the side and it was a stretcher with a white sheet over the figure and then an arm hanging off the side, but the arm was like gray. It was like dead colored. And then um, the visit the uh, people in prison guy, I think I got that wrong, but um, was a black guy. And he was the only black guy in the nativity. They had him and then they had the, uh, the wise man, the one black wise man. And then, uh, what was the other one? I don't know, but so there were some... Some people that didn't like that, that the only black figure was the one in jail or the wise men. I think there was one more too. Um, but so there was a lot of controversy behind that one. But at least it had the theme of corporal works of mercy. So if you knew that, then it would kind of make sense. But they just didn't do a good job um, with it. Like I don't think clothe the naked guy should have been a very athletic naked guy. But maybe some people like that. Um, what else did I want to talk about today? Oh, this week uh, on the 17th is my 17th anniversary of when I quit my job and started the Catholic Traveler. So I know I've kind of told that story before about going from the music industry into this. Joni says, do I prefer a fat naked guy? I don't know, like skinny naked guy or something? 
anyway, I was working in a job. I worked tech support. That's where the whole Chick-fil-A thing came from, if you've heard that story before. But I hated it. And it was like a really toxic environment. Um, it started out great. Like, I, I was worked there for a couple years. And I had a couple friends there, like high school friends that worked with me. But then... They started shipping some of the jobs to India. Then they opened up another place, like way in South Georgia, and they started shipping some people there. And they brought in all these people that were not nice. And it got really bad. And so that's when I hated my job. And I started feeling like I had poison in my veins. I've talked about that before too. And went to my wife and said, like, I want to quit and start a Catholic travel company. And she was like, oh, okay, that sounds good. Um, when she was pregnant and I had the insurance and all that, and a nicely, a nice paying job. Um, but yeah, so I have that on my calendar because I like to remember the day that like this next chapter began. So it was December 17th of 2003. No, it's 17 years. Did I say that? I think I said 17 years. Um, and I like to remind people of that too, that I had a good job, like it was, it was an IT, so it, it paid really well. The insurance was great. I was, I, I, I wasn't the boss, but I was like a boss. I was a trainer and it was good. I just, I, it wasn't for me. And then when it started to get very toxic there and some of the bosses were a little abusive, not just towards me, but towards other people, they never showed appreciation for anything. And I left and I didn't have anything to do. And then I started this because of that. So if you're in that situation where you're not in a good place or you're being forced out of a job because of what's going on, business is closing and everything. Um, it's just good to know that maybe what you're meant to do is out there. You just have to kind of look for it because I didn't really know what it was going to be. I just said I wanted to do something with travel and maybe with Catholic stuff. Like I'd never been on a pilgrimage. I didn't know anything about pilgrimages. Um, it's good to have people that support you too. Like my parents supported me, my wife supported me. Um, my friends thought I was nuts. Some other people thought I was nuts. My boss, my boss, when I like, when I left, he basically told me I was an idiot and that I would never amount to anything. And then he offered me more money and a promotion <laughs> at the same time. I think he just didn't want me to leave. Um, and he said that everybody wants to travel and write about it and and I would never be able to do that. And here I am. And he's Catholic too. So I wonder if he knows what I'm doing because I haven't talked to him since then. Um, but yeah, Amy says brave. It is brave. It is brave to like step out and do something like leave the comfort of where you are. Even though like, I mean, I was comfortable. I just wasn't happy. Um, but I could like still be there maybe, I don't know. But I left, it was very uncomfortable to do that. It was very scary. Like we didn't tell my wife's parents for, I don't know how long, like months. Cause she didn't, she thought that they would be very unhappy with it. Um, so it was like, it wasn't the easy thing to do, but it worked out. And then even like once I started this, so that was in 2003. My first pilgrimage wasn't in 2005. Uh, what age was I? I don't know. <laughs> 2003, 28, maybe 27 or 28. Yeah, 27 or 28, right? I'm 45 now. So whatever, uh, you can do the math. I can't do math when I've had two apparatus spritzes. But yeah, that was like my job. Like a lot of people that are almost 30, that's their job, right? And you keep moving up the corporate ladder or whatever, which I was doing. I started at the bottom and I moved up a few promotions. And then I was like, no, this isn't for me. 
Now, I don't recommend that to people. <laughs> like, if you have a wife that's pregnant and you're making good money and you have insurance, I don't recommend just quitting before you have something. Maybe work, like have a side hustle and work on that before you quit. Um, that's not what I did. I just quit. And then it was, I guess it was a year and a half. So my first pilgrimage was in 2005, June of 2005. I quit in December of 2003. So yeah, that was a year and a half of no income for me. So that's not the way to do it. It worked out, but I wouldn't recommend that to people. It's not the most responsible thing. Um, so yeah, that's exciting though. It's 17 years. So that's why I have it on my calendar because I like that reminder that this is where I was and it felt very hopeless and even though I was quitting and knowing that something better would happen and I knew that I wanted to do something with travel and maybe make it Catholic, I didn't have anything in mind, but it just all kind of fell into place eventually. Of course now I don't have anything. I have this. I have Tipsy Tuesday. so. That's good. Or Wobbly Wednesday. So if you missed Tipsy Tuesday, last week I had to do Wobbly Wednesday. I think most of you were probably there. But my daughter was confirmed last Tuesday. And so I switched Tuesday to Wednesday and I came up with Wobbly Wednesday. And then a friend of mine who doesn't really watch a lot of these but kind of follows along. And he saw that he knows that I have the second cup Saturday. He didn't know what that was all about. Tipsy Tuesday wobbly Wednesday is like how many drinking shows do you have so I had to set him straight that one is coffee and the Wednesday thing was just a one-off I don't just drink all the time but I'm not done with this one I can't have a third though so what else to talk about Christmas we got our Christmas tree so um, Christina sounds amazing, Laura. Yeah, she is amazing. She's very, uh, it's very good to have somebody to support you. And we've, we've had some ups and downs with work. That's for sure. Like the first year I had one trip. The next year I had, I think one trip. The next year, one trip. Now I've had 120, but it took a while to get there. Um, so it's good to have support, that's for sure. So Christmas on, um, what day did we do it? Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. We went to get our Christmas tree. And the last several years, we've either gone home for Christmas. We've been here for seven years. We've either gone home for Christmas or we've done the Christmas markets. And we've never had like a tree. We got a little like two foot tall tree just to like kind of have it on a bookshelf. Um, but last year we had Christmas here and I said next year we're getting a real tree. Um, yeah, because usually what we would do is we'd go home for Christmas, we'd have Thanksgiving here, but last year we went home for Thanksgiving and had Christmas here and I didn't like how it was just the little tree. It didn't feel Christmassy at all. Um, so yesterday, or not yesterday, Saturday we went to get a tree and last week I went looking just to look at like the fake trees and we had a fake tree one year in America I don't remember how much they are but I went to a store that sells a bunch of the artificial trees and one of them it said 90 euro and it was a big tree and I was like oh that's not bad at all and then I looked at another tree and it said 300 euro I was like, why was that bigger one so much more? And so I went back over to that one and it was the lights that were 90 euro. The tree was actually 500. And then, so the cheapest one that I saw was in the 300 range. It was like 394 or something. Um, most of them were like five to 700. So that's crazy, right? That's not how much artificial trees are, are they? Maybe some, these weren't like big. They were like, maybe like six feet, seven feet. They didn't already have lights on them, so the lights were separate. Lights are very expensive here too. But anyway, we went to the uh, the florist down the street, it's like a block from here, and bought a real tree. And the real trees here, 
from like what I've seen so far are like live with roots so you don't chop them down they like I guess they dig them up or something so they have the roots on them and they don't have Christmas tree stands like I couldn't find those anywhere they give you a pot so our live tree was 70 euro it included like a pot a planter and a big five or ten pound bag of soil um, so they they do live trees here not like chopped down but like live trees and then another friend of mine she posted yesterday that they brought their tree in from the terrace and so they've had the same tree for three years and when Christmas is over they put it out on the balcony and it's just like their tree not Christmas but just their tree and then at Christmas they bring it in decorate it again and then when Christmas is over they take it outside so apparently that's what people do here they have real trees they just when it's not Christmas they take the lights down and use them as trees so we're gonna try that we're gonna just move it somewhere else and maybe it'll be an Easter tree or birthday tree or something I don't know but it's been so long since I've had a Christmas tree that I forgot when you bring home a real Christmas tree you're supposed to like shake it and you know you bang it to make sure the the dead what are those things called bristles whatever that they fall off and that if anything's alive it falls out and so I didn't think about that so I carried it down the street um, the kid took a picture of me like carrying this big it's a big tree it's like six seven feet tall wide um, no Kathleen we do not have the Santa Claus hanging out the window we're looking for one um, so that's an Italian thing they hang the Santa Claus out the window on a ladder and so like walking down our street we have like 20 Santa Clauses climbing up um, but anyway I didn't think about uh, oh needles that's what they're called I didn't think about banging the tree to get all the needles off and bugs and stuff and so when we put it up um, a, like a yellow jacket or something flew out of it we got that we took care of that and then um, the next day so I guess Sunday we saw this big spider on the ceiling like like big a couple inches and he lived with us for a few days until today um, he just stayed up on the ceiling and you know we have an old apartment it's like 140 years old or something and so it has really high ceiling kind of like this place um, but the ceilings are probably 15 feet high or something and so even with a broom I don't have a ladder but I couldn't like get to the spider and so we had this huge spider on the ceiling and it was a good roommate it would sleep all day um, and then at night he would get up and kind of walk around we'd see him walking around the ceiling looking for bugs I guess and so this morning I saw him and he started walking down the wall now I don't kill bugs I'll kill mosquitoes because Rome has really bad mosquitoes and I hate them um, but anything else I'll try to free and so this morning big spider was walking down the wall and I was like oh he's you know he's finishing up his evening hunt or whatever and he got like to my level and so I went over there with a broom and I took the broom to him and I was like hey do you want to get on the broom and he was like no thanks and he started walking up the wall so then I put the broom above him and I was like hey you want to get on the broom and he's like no thanks so he started walking down again so then I put the broom beside him and I was like hey you want to get on the broom and he was like all right so he climbed, climbed on the broom and then I put him outside so I saved him um, but I, I won't forget that the next time we get a live tree uh, no Judy I did not name the spider I should have named the spider maybe he'll come back he might come back because um, I just put him outside um, and we were nice to him uh, but anyway I'll, I won't forget to bang the tree out again 
Uh, the bee scared me more than anything because, you know, like yellow jackets just flying out. Uh, name the spider Charlotte. Oh, that's a good idea. All right, I saw a question here. What was the question? Um, what was the question? Tree decoration. Oh, my mom wants to talk about tree decoration. So my Amelia, my oldest, she did the whole, she did all the decorating. And she's very bossy about it. Like she knew exactly what she wanted and she got it done in like just a few minutes. She's very good. It was impressive. Uh, there was a question. Have I been to the Vatican Carriage Museum? Yes, I love the Vatican Carriage Museum. Most people don't know about this, but um, so the Vatican Museum is actually the Vatican Museums, plural, because it's a bunch of different museums. There's the Egyptian Museum, there's the Carriage Museum, there's the Map Museum, there's all kinds of museums. Um, actually, the Map is a gallery, it's not a museum. But anyway, the Carriage Museum is outside and underground, and they have all the carriages from past papacies. So they have like, when the Pope would be carried, like they'd have the guys with the sticks, you know, carrying the Pope up. They have the horse carriages. They have the, the uh, Pope mobile from where John Paul II was shot. Um, they have like the Rolls Royce. They have all these cool Pope mobiles. And so that's the carriage museum. And so I like to send people there. Um, and actually, it's been closed for a long time. They were doing some restoration work. So maybe at least for the last year, like before all this started, it was closed. Um, but it's a really cool thing. I'm just going through your questions now. Um, holiday tree. I like, Annie's talking about the holiday tree. I like the idea of a holiday tree. I don't know if it'll, will Christmas not be as special then though? I don't know. We'll see. Um, change the ornaments based on the holiday. Yeah, we might do that. They did make me a birthday tree last year. So it had all the ornaments were, picture, <laughs> were pictures of me. It was kind of funny. So we had a birthday tree. Uh, don't kill bugs either. The Scavi tour, to of St. Peter. Yep, definitely recommend that. Two years ago I had the same problem. I think that... When I was growing up, my mom might remember it. I think we had a bird in the tree, or a squirrel, or we had something. We had some kind of elephant. Uh, please go to the white elephant. I don't know what that is. Is that something here in Rome? I don't know. Uh, yeah, the birthday tree was fun. All right, what else? I have to, I have to leave soon so that they can close because we have that six o'clock restaurant curfew. So all the restaurants and bars have to close at 6 p.m. So this guy has to shut down in 14 minutes. Hose the tree off. Well, we don't have a hose. <laughs> so we can't do that. Um, my mom says no skulls on our trees. What do you mean? Like a Halloween tree? Some of the music is in English. Yeah, they. They do have some Italian, like, pop artists, but they also play a lot of American pop music. Uh, the White Elephant in Rome. I'll look for it. I don't know where that is, so I'll have to find it. Um, what else? Do you have any other questions? I don't think I have anything else to say. I don't think I have any stories. Talked about the nativity. Talked about my quitting my job anniversary. Talked about the virus stuff bird in our tree. I think it was a bird. Wasn't it a bird? Maybe I'm just dreaming that. I don't know. Uh, NYC may be shutting down again. That's terrible. Uh, Patreon events coming up. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the Patreon site uh, tonight, I think. But um, we're going to do the Christmas walk. So if you're not a patron, you want to become a patron, uh, you can go to my website and do that, thecatholictraveler.com, or you can go to Patreon and look it up, The Catholic Traveler. Um, but we do a live event every month. It's just for patrons. Um, but we're going to do a Christmas walk. So I'm going to take you to show you some of the Christmas lights of Rome and some of the nativities. Uh, we're going to do a cooking thing as well soon. My wife is still trying to get her carbonara perfected. We've had carbonara so many times in the last week. 
So that'll be happening soon. She's already perfected it, but she wants to perfect it for you. Like, so she can say like exactly this many, whatever. So we have to just keep eating it. Um, she bought more stuff for it today. So that's coming too. So the Christmas walk, which is gonna be really pretty because there's some really amazing decorations this year. And another cooking class, but I don't know when the cooking class is gonna be, but it'll be soon. Um, regular daily walks. Yeah, I've kind of slacked on the daily walks the last two weeks. So I'm gonna be doing that again soon as well because I do want to show people the nativities around Rome. Um, Carbonara every day. <laughs> yeah, and she does the Abruzzi style. So it's really good. Do we do the seven fishes? No. Uh, my wife does not like fish. So we don't do the seven fishes tradition. I would like to do that. Oh, Shafiq is here. Hey, Shafiq. So Shafiq is here. That's my guide in Rome. You can see him. He just popped up. SK Bible 717. That's my guide in the Holy Land. So if you want to check out stuff in the Holy Land, he lives in Jerusalem. Um, he posted the Christmas tree lighting yesterday. You should go follow him. Um, and then when travel starts again, come with me to the Holy Land. Shafiq will be our guide. It's good stuff. Uh, Kathleen is making the Amatriciana again. So we did a cooking class a couple weeks ago for the patrons. We made a matriciana and quite a few of you have made it over and over well we do that too we have it like every week um, it's good stuff the matriciana and so the idea of our cooking class for patrons was to show you the Italian dishes but the way the Italians make it so like if you go to Olive Garden for example you can get carbonara but it usually has peas in it or cream or mushrooms a matriciana probably isn't on a lot of menus in America. Um, lasagna, that's going to be a hard one to do live because it takes so long. And we make the pasta and everything. Um, but we're doing these cooking classes to show you how the Italians do dishes that a lot of you already know about. Because um, it's so much different than how we do it in America. Um, all right, let me know if you have any other questions, because I have to go pay. I'm just kind of looking at me, because I don't know what happens if they don't kick me out by six. I assume there's some leniency, like they wait for people to leave, um, but it's such a ridiculous rule. No food or drink after 6 p.m. Um, Oh good, you just followed Shafiq, good. Yeah, he's worth it. He does good stuff. But he's best on tour, so you have to come on pilgrimage with us next time uh, we can do that. We did like 10 trips together last year. Um, it's good stuff. Laura's making a Matriciana this week. Very good. Good. I'm glad to see that so many people have made it and enjoy it. Um, the Carbonara is going to be great. Uh, I think you'll love it. And then we're also going to do Cacio al Pepe soon. So I posted a picture of that yesterday, Cacio al Pepe. Another very traditional Roman dish. Like the Roman dishes are very simple, but they're also very easy to mess up. And so that's why she does so many like test runs before the cooking classes. Um, because even when, like, even if she makes it like every week or something, if you cook something for one minute too long or it's kind of like baking you know how baking if you put just a little too much of something or leave it a little too long it completely destroys it it's the same way with some of the Italian dishes um, so yeah we'll be doing more of those but I think Saturday is the Christmas patrons event so you guys can sign up for that and um, yeah it's gonna be great so um, I'm going to wrap it up. I'll see you on Second Cup Saturday, maybe. I don't know what else is coming up this week. I'll probably do another daily walk, because I need to do that. I need to take you guys out. Yeah, I need to do that. So, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're doing well. Talk to you soon. And I'll be signing. Oh, this guy has a phone. Look at this. He's like an old, old telephone. 
It's a nice little bar. Yes, have a lovely advent. You, know, you don't have much longer. Oh, if you missed it, last uh, on this past Friday, I went to the, uh, the Candlelight Mass. So you should look it up in your area. I might say it wrong, Rorarte. I have a hard time with those two words. R-O-R-A-T-E, Rorarte Mass. It's Latin. Um, a lot of you have those in your area. It's usually on Friday. It's a candlelight mass during Advent. So I went to one at 6 a.m. this past Friday. I'm gonna to go to another one this Friday. But it's a beautiful mass. So look it up. It might be at your Latin church, even though it's not a Latin church kind of thing. It's it's um, it's a German tradition, but a lot of churches do the uh, candlelight mass on Fridays. So try to find that because this is the last Friday before Christmas. Um, it's a very beautiful experience, very holy, quiet, peaceful. Because the whole mass is lit by candle. Um, so find that. Maybe you can say the word better than I can. Even though I go to the Latin mass a lot, I still can't say the word. Rorarte. I don't know. We'll end on that. So, great to see you. And on Friday, I'll be going to that mask. And if you want to follow that, uh, look for that here. Um, have a great third week of Advent. And talk to you soon. Ciao.